Hey guys, Cory Cola here, if you're into that kind of thing. In my previous video, I discussed the possibility of bully squads in VHS, so I've decided to cover a topic for the other side of the spectrum as well. And so today, I'd like to talk about tunneling and camping in VHS. Can monster players tunnel and camp? Is it beneficial to their gameplay? And will it win games? It's always been a hot topic in DBD and other asymmetrical games like it, so of course players want to know how that sort of playstyle will pan out in VHS. If you're unfamiliar with VHS, then I highly recommend you check out my previous videos discussing the gameplay. But I digress. If you're already loaded up on that knowledge, let's dive right in. And coming in with our first point, injury trails are subtle. I'll be drawing plenty of comparisons to DBD from time to time for obvious reasons as it will pertain to similar mechanics here as well, but tunneling one particular teen in VHS won't be as easy as it is in DBD. For example, survivors in Dead by Daylight leave obvious tracks or scratch marks when they're running and those scratch marks become more prominent when the survivor is injured. In VHS, you leave a trail of glitchy, static footprints, but only when you're injured, and they are a lot more subtle. See that? Yeah, not so conspicuous. These are the footprints VHS teens will leave behind, which are only useful if you're close to the teen in chase, as they also fade pretty quickly. Once a monster hits a teen, their POV is forced upwards for a few moments, making it difficult to track the teen you just injured, who has plenty of time to get out of sight. In Dead by Daylight, you can follow the scratch marks trail, but you're going to need to be a lot more eagle-eyed here if you did want to chase that same teen in VHS. But also, you may not want to chase that same player because the rage mechanic rewards spreading out attention. This rage meter here builds up in three ways, injuring the teens, feasting on a down teen, and gradually over time. Once filled, the monster becomes enraged and can down a teen in a single hit with their next attack. However, downing a teen will fully deplete this meter. This means that in order to get the best use out of this mechanic, spreading out your attention among the teens and sowing chaos will get you the most bang for your buck since injuring and then downing the same team right away will only deplete your rage. Because of this, monster players will want to spread out the damage among multiple teens in order to utilize their rage as best as possible. There's also less need to tunnel because teens don't need to be downed. In Dead by Daylight, the whole concept for the killer is to down and then hook each survivor in order to meet their win condition. But the win condition for the monster in VHS is to eliminate the teens by hitting them and lowering all their hit points to zero. That's it. While it is advantageous to down a teen in VHS to create pressure, it's not technically a requirement like it is in Dead by Daylight, meaning that if you injure a teen and they get away, no biggie. You've already accomplished part of your overall win condition and created pressure just for injuring someone. Good job, you! When a teen loses all of their hit points, they're dead, and so technically, you don't even need to down them at all throughout the match in order to eliminate them, as long as you just keep hitting them over and over every time you see them. This means that even a partial chase with only one hit is still an overall success for the monster. Now, Let's say the monster player doesn't care about any of the aforementioned points and still wants to tunnel one teen anyway. Well, tunneling allows three teens to build weapons. The rest of the teens are going to have ample time to craft the weapons they need in order to destroy the monster's stigmas faster than a goose chasing a terrified child who only wanted to pet the long ducky. By only paying attention to and chasing a single teen, the rest of the teens will be free to construct weapons and then the game becomes a lot more difficult for the monster at that point as the teens can potentially eliminate up to three of the monster's stigmas in a relatively short time frame. So the whole exchange would be high risk, low reward for the monster. 
The monster player would have a difficult time coming back from that, so it would only be detrimental for their overall match. But what if someone still wanted to tunnel and down a teen anyways, and now they're setting up a tent and building a fire? Camping puts the monster at risk. For the exact reason stated in the previous point here, as you'd be giving three teens all the time in the world to craft the weapons that they need. Not only that, but it's actually worse for you since you'd be wasting even more time sticking to a down teen waiting for their HP to reach zero, which is very gradual by the way. It's worth mentioning here that once a monster is successfully hit with a stigma, they're banished for a short period, which would give the teens ample opportunity to rescue their friend and prepare for the monster reappearing, which will be especially problematic if the teens utilize their time properly to equip themselves, which they can do quite easily as the in-game HUD gives valuable information on your teammates' positions and what they're crafting as well to make coordinating efforts a lot easier. If the monster wants to camp a down teen, then, much like the terrified child being chased by an angry cobra chicken, they will likely learn a valuable life lesson. So with all of those factors laid out on the table, can a monster player tunnel and camp you in VHS? Technically, yes. Yes, they could. Would it be beneficial to them? No, not very likely. With all the previous points in mind, a monster player would only be putting themselves at a disadvantage by partaking in tunneling and camping. Now, the game hasn't been released yet, so there could of course be rare cases where a monster is successful in this way, but the core game mechanics seem to be built in such a way to promote the constant cat and mouse chase rather than remaining stagnant and still. Could tunneling and camping be a thing of the past in VHS? Time will tell, and it shouldn't be too long for the beta, so pretty soon we're going to get to see for ourselves. But what are your thoughts? I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below, and for more content like this, be sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, this has been Cola. Take care, folks, and I'll see you in the beta.